Welcome to Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm John White. Today we're going to be talking about fall lawn and fall lawn care. And with me today is Dr. Berndt Lionauer. Good morning, Bert. Berndt is our extension turf grass specialist. And Berndt, we're talking about fall lawn care, and I'm sure you have some tips for our viewers. Yeah, thank you, John. It's uh, my pleasure to be with you today. And uh, first and foremost in our lawn care program in the fall is fertilization. Uh, we talked earlier this year about fertilization and uh, recommended for warm season grasses like the Bermuda grass here about one pound of nitrogen per month. Uh, we might consider reducing that amount a little bit, uh, okay. just not to enhance a lot of succulent growth and then going into the winter, because that makes the plant very susceptible to uh, winter kill. So um, it's now, we reach now the middle of September. If uh, you haven't applied your September application, uh, reduce the nitrogen to about a quarter pound or about half a pound. And then the last one, the last fertilization, beginning of October, mid of October, reduce it even further to maybe half a pound of nitrogen. Okay. And if we're looking at a fertilizer, as far yeah. as a, a formulation or analysis, uh, here we have a, a typical turf fertilizer. We have three numbers on it. Here the 15, the 5, and the 10. The first number, in this case the 15, stands for nitrogen. The second number for phosphorus, and the third number for potassium. In uh, late fall fertilization and fall fertilization, we uh, might consider having a fertilizer that has a, a high potassium number. So this one is actually quite perfect. 15 for nitrogen, 5 for phosphorus, and 10 for potassium. Because the potassium helps the grass plant to survive the winter and to become a little bit more winter hardy. Okay. And we do want nitrogen there because even though the grass may be brown on top, we still got live roots and the plant is respiring and going through its, its process. Absolutely. So. Even though the grass that goes dormant, the warm season grass, uh, over the winter, uh, there is, it's still physiologically active. We have root growth and we might even have some top growth over the winter. So uh, we definitely don't want to neglect the nitrogen in our fall fertilization program. Okay. Let's go talk about another aspect of fall care and that's mowing. Barrett, talking about mowing, there's a big controversy uh, as far as the warm season grasses is to take them all the way down, scalp them, you know, as going into winter, or to leave the grass tall. Well, John, um, I prefer the idea of kind of in between, you know. You want to reduce the mowing height, but not take it, taking it down to the ground. Because if you leave some protective cover uh, on the ground, it helps to prevent the winter desiccation. So lower the mowing height, but not take it down to the, to the ground. Okay. How do we determine mowing well, height and what would you recommend? Um, here, in this case, we this have a... This is a hybrid Bermuda. Yeah, this is a hybrid Bermuda grass, and we have a mowing height, a standard mowing height of about an inch and a half. So for the winter, you want to take this down to maybe an inch or three quarters of an inch, maybe okay. even half an inch, what, whatever uh, pleases you the most. Uh, however, don't take it down to the ground at all so that you have bare soil exposed. Okay. How about as far as the cool season grass, as far as mowing height, what should be maintained? Uh, with, the, with the cool season grasses... Yeah, fescue and bluegrass? Yeah, you might want to follow the same rules, but uh, reducing the mowing height is not, is not that crucial for the cool season grasses because they grow... They're putting uh, on growth. Yeah, they're, they're putting on growth over the winter, they grow longer into the fall, and they come out earlier again in the spring. Sometimes they might not even go dormant at all, depending on how the winter is and where you are in the state. Okay. Well, let's talk about the last segment, and that's watering, irrigation. Barrent watering is a real critical issue here in New Mexico. And on a warm season yard going into fall here, um, how often should we be watering, and maybe what amount should we be watering? Um, well, John, uh, we mentioned earlier that Bermuda grass goes dormant over the winter. Dormant doesn't mean it dies. So um, 
you have to add water but you definitely have to reduce the amount of water and uh, the, the, the times that you apply water. So let's say if, if you're on a three times uh, weekly basis right now, you, during the winter you might want to reduce it to once every two weeks or maybe even to once every month. That depends on the soil type and on the location where you are. Okay. And one way to check it, I know uh, I've advised a lot of homeowners just is to use a simple screwdriver, push it into the ground. If you can push it in with a pretty steady pull, then it's, uh, it's moist at least to that depth. And we do like to have probably about six to eight inches of moisture for turf grass roots. That is, that is correct because uh, some moisture in the soil helps us to avoid desiccation in the winter. Okay. And uh, we can actually check it out here how the soil looks like. Got pretty good moisture there. Yep. You can feel it. It's very moist here. So they're doing a good job in irrigation here. If you're noticing this beginning to dry out, that means that you do need to water. So if you're constantly checking, um, you'll have a good idea how often you need to water rather than doing it on a calendar basis. Absolutely. That's okay. the idea. Well, Berndt, thank you very much for being on Southwest Yard and Garden, and we hope to have you back as a guest again. It was my pleasure, John, being with you today. Thank you.